Hi, how are you? You have no idea who I am, and that's completely fine. Actually, maybe it's preferred because you were born that way. Okay, I don't even know what this video is going to be about. I literally just set up all of my equipment, <laughs> equipment, camera, microphone, equipment. Let me guys tell you what my thought process is at the moment, and then maybe a video will come out of it. You probably already know what this video is about. Do I know what it's about? We'll see. So Call Me By Your Name is authored by Andre Aciman. And I thought, you know what, before the movie comes out, since it's a movie adaptation, I might as well take a look at the book. When I first tried reading it, which was maybe a month ago, instantly I just judged it because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot, I'm trash. I thought, no, 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 it's just not necessarily my taste. So it's a very slow burn and it, it takes a little while to get to, you know, the thick of things is it cuts the three oh no four parts uh the entire book so you kind of get the first meeting the summer in which they were lovers the part in which they had to part and when they found each other again much more into uh well elio's adulthood because he was very young when the ro romance began elio perlman he's our protagonist we see the story through him throughout the entire book and he's telling this story from memory. So he goes back into the days in which he first met Oliver, who soon became his first love. It's not chronological, the way in which he would tell the story. He would jump back and forth. There was a lot of that. But anyway, I gave it a try again a, a couple of days prior. And like I said, inhaled it, completely destroyed this book. Or did the book destroy me? It's, oh, it's so strange. Like, after having read the book, and if you have read the book, then maybe you can relate with me on this. There's this feeling of, like, it's melancholy, but it's also, oh my god, that was my phone. Fuck me. There was a feeling of melancholy that's kind of mixed with hope, even though it's misplaced hope, because I'm pretty sure that book is closed between the two of them. Spoiler alert, they don't really completely end up together. Um, because mainly the story is about their first love and how, you know, they both discover themselves through each other and there's a huge age gap between them. I am, I feel like I'm going all over the place and that's because I don't even know where to start with this book. I will tell you the things that I, I like about it because I think I've already gone over the things that kind of threw me off. There were a lot of, um, emotions that the character would go through and for a 17 year old, honestly, for them to kind of have that thought process is... First of all, relatable for me now, at the age that I am, which I'm not going to reveal, 75. But when I was 17, I don't remember, <laughs> I don't remember overthinking my, my life and my things that I was about to say before I even said it. Like, I was a pretty reckless 17-year-old, so being able to go into the mind of a 17-year-old that actually has a good head on his shoulders is refreshing and also very interesting. Like, it draws you into the character immediately because he's different. He is interesting. Elio is, he goes through a great um, character arc. Listen, in this channel, if you've been following me for a little bit, then it is no secret that I am, I fall victim to falling in love with, uh, with fictional characters. It's a thing, it's a thing. I wouldn't describe Oliver as the ultimate fictional character that I'm like super in love with, but because Elio was so, so fucking fixated on this guy, I felt it. Elio doesn't shy away from getting into absolute detail about the things that he's feeling in a millisecond. It wasn't difficult for me, at least, to feel the way that he was feeling. If he says, if he overanalyzes a thing and he hangs on to that guy's every word, I'm doing the same thing. I'm in there with Elio, just like, did he really mean that? Did he mean this? Or did he mean this? Or did he mean that? I haven't seen it yet and there's no way for me to see it because I doubt that it's going to be shown here in the Philippines um, because of, you know, reasons. So I'll have to acquire it maybe through Netflix or somewhere else. And what intrigues me about the movie is the casting, the director, and all of the interviews that I've seen so far that involves the three of these people and how they talk about the movie. And also the trailer. If you guys haven't seen the trailer yet, um, watch it it's available on youtube available so in the in the interviews that i have seen um of timothy um timothy chalamet army hammer and luca guadagnino 
They have talked about this movie in great length. And Luca, the director, is actually quite eccentric and very interesting whenever he talks about like his process and how he films and like how he treats his actors.、Um, I remember seeing in one of the Uh, one of the more longer interviews, more longer, that's not a thing. In one of the longer interviews, I think this was for Tiff, he discussed how he doesn't like to audition his,、uh, his actors or the people that he's about to cast for the movie or the project that he's working on. He thinks that if you already have existing movies prior to the one that you're about to film, then you can just go through that. He would much rather have a conversation with you, so he takes you out, you have lunch, and then. He interacts with you, sees you for your personality, your charm, your whatever, and then if he likes you, he casts you. A lot of this movie is resting on Timothy Chalamet's shoulders, him being the lead and him playing Elio. Okay, I've seen him once, I think. I saw him once in this movie that I saw because of Lily Grave, and I love her, uh, uh, Miss Stevens. And I remember seeing him, he did a monologue in that movie. If you haven't seen it before, the movie's alright. <laughs> But you see it just solely. To see the monologue, a lot of chemistry is so palpable between these two actors.、Um, one of the ways in which they think they were able to do that is just spending so much time together. A lot of this movie was shot in Italy in a small place called Crema. And、uh, Timothy was there before Army Hammer, and I think he was there a month prior. And since the two of them were the only people, That could communicate in English, they kind of just like clicked immediately and then they hung out together almost all the time. I love it when two people that are cast、um, to play such intimate roles actually get along in real life. I feel like it, it, it translates more effectively on screen. It's looking good for the people that have been able to see it. Most of them have nothing but great things to say about it. And I also heard, I also heard that Luca, the director, Um, he made some changes to the ending of the movie. And also the peach scene, peach scene, peach scene. Peach scene. Apparently they, they included it. And I remember saying this to my sister earlier because she was asking me、um, when I told her that I'd finished the book. She was asking me, well, what's the ending? Because I don't plan on seeing it. And normally I would just be like, oh, okay, well, this is what happens. But because I, I don't know, for some reason, because I've tracked this movie so much and I, I've, I've read up on like, the hardships that the creators and the filmmakers had to go through in order to, to, to turn this movie into a reality. And also, the, even so much as like, the simple process of getting Army Hammer to play Oliver, which apparently took, took Luca、um, a phone call. To Army Hammer, that might have might have spanned to an hour. I would have given anything to listen to that phone call, by the way. He was decided upon saying no and completely refusing the role had it not been for that conversation that he had with Luca. So, you know, just all of these elements that kind of went into this movie and how proud they are whenever they talk about it. Yeah, I don't know if you guys know, but、uh, Movie 43, a movie that's a, it's a compilation of like funny, well, comedy skits、um, that stars. A lot of like high profile A list actors. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but not one person that was cast in that movie wanted to be associated with it in any way, so much so to the point that they didn't even try to promote it. But to see the contrast between that and how that was sort of not promoted, kinda, just to see how proud they are of finally seeing this, this, this labor of love come into fruition is, I don't know, it excites me as someone that's an absolute cinephile. And、uh, someone who has also read the book, gonna be that person that's like, well, that's not what happened in the fucking book. If you guys are looking into reading some beautiful, subtext, sensual summer romance in Italy that's all about sweat and skin and suntan lotion and fucking stares that are like, do you want me or am I making it up? Oh my god. This book is right up your alley. I highly recommend it. I guess this is my video. My name is Noah. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, let me know. Leave me a like.、Uh, if you have any other comments, suggestions, whatever the fuck you want to talk about this movie, please talk about this movie with me. I have all my social media links over here. You can contact me there. Leave me a comment if you want to do that too. Subscribe. It's free. It's whatever. And、uh, until the next video,、uh, bye. <laughs> This is never not going to be offered, I feel like.